am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. Typhoon Nika intensifies, threatens northern Philippines, Pagasa warns of floods, landslides and storm surges. Local news, woman dies, nine others injured in Van Road crash. Observance of Kalag Kalag 2024 in the city was peaceful. DSWD-10, educational assistance not a priority, says Galia. Extension of Elwa, officials were at COWD opposed. National feature. Despite running for Davao City Mayor, ex-President Duterte says he is retired. International news. Economists warn of inflation bomb as Trump returns to White House with economic policies. Entertainment. K-pop group highlights concert films celebrating their 15th anniversary will be shown in the Philippines. Sports. NBA, Cavaliers maintain perfect record with comeback victory over Nets. International feature, tens of thousands protest in Spain over government's response of deadly floods. National feature, Bataan firm to challenge raid warrant, employee to file charges. Isaac Newton, his life and why apples fall. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community. Good morning, Philippines. Magana umaga, Luzon, o may adlaw, Visaya, sa Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, November 13, 2024. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Local news, woman dies, nine others injured in van road crash. The driver of a passenger van involved in a fatal accident may face criminal charges if an amicable settlement cannot be reached with the family of the deceased passenger and nine other injured individuals. The incident took place in Barangay Imbato, Baungon, Bukidnon, resulting in a tragic loss and raising concerns over road safety. Police Lieutenant Deo Gracias Gulayan, Deputy Commander of the Baogon Police Station, provided details about the accident involving a van driven by Elizir Padinio. The incident claimed the life of Mirna Nunez, who along with Padinio resided in the area. Both families now face the devastating aftermath of the tragedy. The investigation revealed that the van attempted to overtake another vehicle, resulting in a sudden burst of one of its front tires, which caused the van to overturn. Despite efforts to save Nunez, who was gravely injured, she was pronounced dead upon arrival at the municipal health unit, where medical personnel were unable to revive her. As of this report, the driver remains detained in a PNP mini-cell, 
receiving treatment for injuries sustained in the accident. He faces possible criminal charges depending on the outcome of negotiations with the victim's families. Local authorities continue to assess road safety protocols and measures to prevent similar accidents in the future. Observance of Kalag Kalag 2024 in the city was peaceful. The observation in the city during Kalag Kalag 2024 was clear. No major untoward incidents were recorded. This is the initial assessment of the City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Department regarding the event. According to CDRRMD Head Nick Habagat, the number of individuals visiting various cemeteries in the city has increased. He also mentioned that local authorities were prepared for the event, ensuring smooth traffic management and public safety. Volunteers and emergency responders were deployed across key areas to assist in case of emergencies, although their services were not heavily needed. The event was generally peaceful, with no significant disruptions or accidents reported. Local officials are now evaluating the effectiveness of the measures taken and planning improvements for future events. They noted that the community's cooperation played a significant role in maintaining order and safety during the observance. With the success of this year's activities, the city is now looking into expanding the event support infrastructure, including better crowd control measures, additional medical assistance situations, and more accessible transportation options for the public. Despite the increased number of visitors, the overall atmosphere was calm, and residents and visitors alike were able to honor their loved ones with dignity and respect. DSWD 10, Educational Assistance Not a Priority, says Galia. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has clarified that providing educational assistance is not a priority at the moment. This statement was made by DSWD 10 spokesperson Rochelle Galia after around 30 students gathered at the office to request such assistance. The students reportedly received misleading information from their classmates, neighbors, and social media posts. Galia explained that the department is currently prioritizing assistance for life and death situations. As a result, the remaining funds are being allocated for medical and burial assistance. She emphasized that the Department of is focusing on urgent needs, particularly for individuals in critical health situations and families dealing with the loss of loved ones. Galia also urged the public to refrain from spreading unverified information and to focus on addressing the genuine needs of the community. The DSWD-10 assured that as soon as funds become available, they will continue supporting education-related requests. But for now, health and emergency-related needs take precedence. The department is working closely with local government units to ensure that assistance reaches those who need it most. Extension of ELWA officials work at COWD opposed. Interim General Manager Fermin Harales confirmed that recommendation confirmed that the recommendation for an extension of the service of the current ELWA appointed officials deployed at the Cagayan de Oro City Water District main branch in the city. Harales revealed that the recommendation for a six month extension stemmed from findings by the ELWA regarding widespread mismanagement and gross negligence by the former Water District Manager Engineer Tony Young, along with his former Board of Directors in handling the city's water system. This includes unresolved issues such as dirty water in Barangay La Pasan, Corrales Avenue as well as the slow to no water supply in the western part of the city. Furthermore, the ELWA investigation also uncovered defective financial inventories and other financial issues caused by the former officials of the city's water district. The investigation further revealed that under the previous management, there was a lack of transparency in water disruption and billing, leading to confusion and mistrust among residents. 
Additionally, there were allegations of improper maintenance of criti critical infrastructure, leading to frequent water service interruptions in several barangays. The findings have raised serious concerns about the long-term sustainability of the water supply system and its ability to meet the growing needs of the city's population. In light of these issues, the ELWA has emphasized the need for a more efficient and accountable management team to address the city's water problems. The extended term for the current officials aim to provide continuity and stability as corrective measures are implemented. The local government is also expected to collaborate with the new management to ensure that improvements are made and that residents have access to clean, reliable water services. Weather forecast. Typhoon Nika intensifies threatens northern Philippines. Pagasa warns of floods, landslides, and storm surges. Typhoon Nika continues to move west northwestward over the Cordillera administrative region with a speed of 25 km per hour. Its sustained winds are at 120 km per hour with gusts reaching up to 200 km per hour. The typhoon is expected to intensify further before making landfall, with projections suggesting that it may strike the northern Philippines, particularly in the Isabella or northern Aurora region. As the storm approaches, it is bringing with it severe weather conditions, including heavy rainfall, strong winds, and storm surges. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration has issued warnings for affected areas such as Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, and Babuyan Islands, which may experience flash floods and landslides. Strong winds are also expected to affect coastal and mountainous areas, and authorities are advising the public to remain alert, prepared for possible evacuations. Pagasa continues to monitor the storm closely and will issue further updates as the situation develops. Please stay updated on weather advisories to ensure safety. National News. Despite running for Davao City Mayor, ex-President Duterte says he is retired. Former President Rodrigo Duterte has voiced his support for Carlo Nograles, a former cabinet secretary and chairperson of the Civil Service Commission, who is vying for the mayor's position in Davao City during the 2025 elections. Duterte praised Nograles' decision to run which sets the stage for a highly competitive mayoral race between two influential political families. Nograles, who served as Davao's first district representative from 2010 to 2019, stepped down from his role at the, at the CSC to focus on his commitment to local governance in Davao City. The race is expected to be a battle between Duterte and Nograles, with Duterte filing his candidacy for mayor alongside his son, Paolo Pulo Duterte, who is also running for Congress. Duterte has emphasized that his platform will focus on issues that resonate with the public, including his unwavering stance on drugs, crime, and maintaining Davos' reputation as a safe and thriving city. Local analysts suggest that Duterte's return to the mayoralty could mean a continuation of his hardline policies particularly on crime and drug-related issues, which have been central to his political image. Meanwhile, Nograles, with his background in public service, aims to bring new leadership to the city, promising a more inclusive and progressive governance. International News 
Economists warn of inflation bomb as Trump returns to White House with new economic policies. In international news, the economic status of the United States of America faces a drastic change as former President Donald Trump reclaims the White House. Former Labor Secretary Robert Rich is raising alarms over five key policies proposed by Donald Trump that he says could severely impact the U.S. economy if Trump returns to office. Rich's analysis, backed by other 16 Nobel Prize-winning economists, warns that these policies could lead to what they're calling an inflation bomb. Here's a quick breakdown of Rich's concerns. First, Trump's proposed tariffs on imports up to 60% on Chinese goods would likely would likely mean higher prices for American customers, costing the average household around $2,500 more each year. Next, Trump's support for corporate mergers, especially in the airline and oil industries, could reduce competition, allowing companies to raise prices unchecked. Energy costs could also raise, as Trump plans to roll back clean energy incentives making gasoline and utilities more expensive additionally rich points out that trump's team is considering devaluing the u.s dollar which could benefit exporters but drive up prices on imports finally trump's deportation plans of undocumented workers could disrupt in industries like agriculture construction and food services driving up prices on essentials. Rich, has, Rich and other economists are urging voters to consider these potential impacts as the 2024 election approaches. Important insights there, economists are clearly watching closely. As these matters are under review, former President Trump has already claimed victory in the White House race with 312 electoral votes compared to Kamala Harris 226. Entertainment K-pop group highlights concert films celebrating their 15th anniversary will be shown in the Philippines. Highlights 15th anniversary concert film Highlight lights go on again. It's not just a celebration of their music, but also a deep dive into their personal stories and the evolution of their journey as a group. The film features highlights from their recent anniversary performance in Seoul, which included memorable songs such as Please Don't Be Sad, Fiction, and Beautiful, offering fans a nostalgic trip through the band's most iconic moments. In addition to the performances, the movie captures candid behind-the-scenes moments with the members sharing personal stories that have never been told before. Fans can also hear about the highs and lows of the group's career, showcasing the bond they've built over the years. This makes a screening not only a concert, but a heartfelt celebration of their enduring legacy. The film screenings at SM Cinema from November 22 to 24 give fans the opportunity to experience these performances and stories in a larger-than-life format, making it an unmissable event for highlights dedicated fan base in the Philippines. Sports NBA Cavaliers maintain perfect record with comeback victory over Nets. The Cleveland Cavaliers 105-100 victory over the Brooklyn Nets on November 9, 2024, showcased an incredible second-half comeback that helped them extend their unbeaten start to 11-0. Trailing by 14 points in the third quarter, the Cavs rallied in the final period, outscoring the Nets 35-18 to clinch the win. Key to this victory was Evan Mobley's outstanding defensive play, contributing 23 points, 
13 rebounds and multiple steals and blocks. His defensive efforts, especially an empathic block against Cameron Johnson in the final seconds, were critical. The team's resilience under coach Kenny Atkinson was evident as they struggled in the first three quarters but managed to turn the game around in the fourth. Mobley, alongside Donovan Mitchell, played a pivotal role in leading the team to another close win. This victory also preserved their perfect season as they look ahead to continuing their historic start. International feature Tens of thousands protest in Spain over government's response to deadly floods. Tens of thousands of pro protesters took the streets in Valencia on November 9, 2024 to express their anger over the authorities' handling of devastating floods that struck the region, killing over 200 people and causing widespread destruction. The demonstrations with the demonstrations with some estimates putting the, tur the turnout at 130,000, were sparked by frustrations over the delayed response and inadequate recovery efforts. Protesters made chanting murderers and holding signs accusing Valencia's regional president and Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez of negligence, made their voices heard across Spain. In addition to protests in Valencia, the Prime Minister and King Felipe VI were targeted, dur target. were targeted during a visit to the worst hit town, Pai Porta. Both the monarch and the Prime Minister faced harsh criticism, with some locals throwing mud and bottles, accusing them of not responding swiftly enough to the disaster. Mm -hmm. The royal visit was cut short, and Sanchez's motorcade was attacked by a violent crowd, leading to tensions between local and national authorities regarding disaster management regarding the disaster management national feature but the unfirmed to challenge raid warrant employee to file charges the malaysian owned company central one bataan ph is preparing to file a motion to quash the search warrant executed by the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission during a raid in, in late October. The raid led to the seizure of the company's equipment, and the company now faces serious allegations of human trafficking and operating as an unlicensed Philippine offshore gaming operator, despite its claim to operate as a business process outsourcing firm. Central One's legal counsel, Cherry Ann de la Cruz, confirmed that the, that the motion will be filed in the Malolos court in Bulacan to contest the validity of the search warrant. The company is also seeking the return of its seized equipment to resume its operations. This raid is part of the ongoing scrutiny of the pogo industry in the Philippines, which has come under increased attention due to concerns over illegal gambling human trafficking, and other criminal activities linked to some gaming operators. The PAOCC's actions highlight the government's intensified efforts to crack down on illegal gambling activities and ensure that only licensed operators are allowed to continue their businesses in the country. The case is developing amidst wider controversy surrounding the pogo industry, with the Philippine government signaling a potential crackdown on unlicensed operators, further complicating the landscape for gaming and outsourcing businesses in the region. <music> Trivia Isaac Newton, his life and why apples fall. Far more than just discovering the law of gravity, Sir Isaac Newton also laid foundational principles in multiple fields. In optics, he demonstrated that white light is composed of a spectrum of colors, using a prism to show that light could be separated into individual colors. 
an insight that transforms scientific understanding of light and color. His work culminated in optics, a major work that helped establish experimental physics. Newton's Principia Mathematica introduced his three laws of motion, which describe the behavior of objects in motion and at rest, and remain fundamental to classical mechanics. Additionally, he, he independently developed calculus, a branch of mathematics essential for modeling continuous change, which opened new avenues in physics and engineering. Newton's systematic evidence-based approach to science was revolutionary, helping to establish the modern scientific method and impacting everything from astronomy to modern engineering. His contributions formed the basis for much classical science, influencing scientific thought for centuries. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. And please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And have a wonderful week. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community.